what's up guys my name is Austin Sidhu and today with me joined I have Charisma Carrion, Ava Verdor and Paris Fullen. So welcome to the American Horror Story podcast. Today the discussion is going to be about this true horror story documentary called The American Nightmare. So imagine just 20 miles away from where you live a horror story that becomes into a documentary is being taking place. This is really frightening and just absurd in any any substance. What do you think about that, Ava? Um, I think it's actually really scary. Um, I think it's even more frightening that it's close to home. Um, just imagine if uh, you know it happened to like someone you knew, you know, someone close to you. Like that's actually, and nobody believed you. Like yeah. that's really. It's scary, yeah. especially like waking up to that, like to intruders, like even like growing up as a little kid, you'd be like, oh, what if my whole family is getting murdered or something? That's just something that becomes a reality. And I, I think that's really frightening. Yeah. yeah. And just to keep in mind that we're in Fairfield right now. This happened in Vallejo, which is not even 20 minutes away. Um, so basically what happened was this, this couple um, Denise Huskins and Aaron Quinn, they were sleeping in their home just as someone would. They had an argument the night before, just a few hours before that happened, just about how Aaron Quinn would um, just text uh, his ex all the time. They would work together too and that would cause a little discrepancy. Um, so they were sleeping and intruders just broke into the house and um just tied zip ties and uh put blacked out swimming goggles on their eyes and they couldn't see anything no one was screaming and denise got taken away in the car that aaron had and um but the thing was that aaron was kept in the house he was monitored so anything any move he would make is monitored and yeah. And additionally to that, um, they were also forced to drink NyQuil, so they were like, they were both passed out, you know. Um, they were just given like orders. Yeah. And I think that's just like they so were, bizarre. Yeah, they were forced to listen to wind chimes. Wind well, chimes, well, the and, NyQuil, yeah, uh, the, the wetsuits. Yeah, the yeah, the wetsuits. Wet like that's yeah. really weird. Yeah, and like I could see how like while Aaron was being interrogated, like how that could be like, you know, bizarre because that's such a crazy story. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't know. And keep in mind that Aaron, all the blame was put on him because of that little argument they had. Obviously, he had to say everything to the police, the it law enforcement. Motive. Yeah, it was a motive, yeah. So. so obviously, the fingers would be pointed at him, but it wasn't really him even the fbi agents they made him do a lie detector test and at first i did think it was yeah him. i i at thought it was I him thought, too yeah. but even after the lie detector test the fbi agent said oh no without any question you failed so you're they the were person that him kidnapped really hard like they were saying like oh like you failed miserably like you, you killed her like, where is she? They would ask her a question, and he would just be like, I don't know where she's at, I don't know where she's and at. And I feel like in a situation like this, the male's always going to be targeted. Like, they're always going to believe the female just because I feel like, I don't know, in society, we're just kind of seen as weaker. Mm -hmm. So I feel like that's why they pointed it out to the male, like, oh, Aaron did it, Aaron did it, Aaron did it. So. And he's really the only witness, too. Cause, yeah. yeah. So what happened was that with all the bizarre circumstances, um, no one really believed Aaron. That was the thing that was going on. So Aaron really has no ground to stand on because no one's believing him. Right. There's really nothing going on to the story. Even the Huskins family, like they didn't, they were keeping their eyes on him as well. Cause they never, I think they mentioned that they never even met him. Yeah. So. It was a little shaky at first, but after a little while, the ground set, the kidnappers, they kept on emailing the agents, and the agents, they would 
kind of fall back on that and to be like, oh, is it really Aaron? Because why am I getting these emails about it? Well, he's in custody. Yeah. yeah. It didn't make sense. But, you know, I could see, like, a lot of people can fake stuff, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah. They definitely could have taken better, like, precautions, precautions yeah. leading up to it. To it was just playing, I was just going to say, it was playing really well by the kidnapper. Yeah. yeah. For, him, for them to have the police. Okay, but the, the lead detective, though? Yeah. Oh, Matthew Mustard? Yeah. The steps and actions he took? Yeah. We weren't giving professional. He was like, yeah. yeah, it was like, and he was, um, oh. He was just overall a really bad, um, detective on this case. Because you're not only not trusting Aaron Quinn, you're also instilling fear into him. Be like, right. oh, you're, you're the perpetrator, so just confess to your crime. Mm -hmm. They were so motivated to just shut this case shut this case and um but at the end it wasn't aaron quinn at all right. he was just a victim as well so going into the second segment we have the case analysis keep in mind that this case was a bay area case all all over the news it was a really high profile case and um they were really not really trying to solve the case but just um instilling the efforts into aaron quinn because they just wanted to shut the case i just feel like they couldn't find any more evidence mm -hmm. that could we that it was someone else right because because they're saying like oh there was blood found in your house of course there's going to be blood if like intruders are breaking in you know tying you up like you know what i'm saying so it didn't really make sense and then so after two days after the kidnapping um denise was found safe and sound in huntington beach in california which is 400 miles away from where she was kidnapped this was actually where Denise's parents live. And um She also grew up there. Yeah, she grew up there. Which is kinda weird because why are you four hundred miles away? Why would that make sense? But it turns out later on that the kidnappers they wanna they didn't want any suspicion on them yet. So they wanted to release her where the far, kidnappers far. wouldn't be found. Yeah. Um She was found safe and sound. But the thing was that she went, obviously no, no one was home at her house because her parents were in Vallejo. Um, what happened was she went to her neighbor's apartment and called the police. And then later she went on to getting interrogated and stuff. Why, why, um, why are you here? Um, who sent you here? Or did you set this up? They automatically thought it was a hoax, like, because she was found alive, you know, they thought and, like, that unharmed. it was... like, Yeah. And recently, apparently, like, um, the, there was a new movie called Gone Girl, which they were comparing the case oh, to. The yeah. media. Yeah. yeah. And, like, Gone Girl is pretty much like a, a movie where a husband cheats on his wife, and in order to get revenge, she fakes her death and blames it on the husband. And so they thought that that's what Denise was trying to do, but um, they pretty much called it a hoax. And like that night she was found, she came back. Um, Vallejo, the police department was like, oh, um, uh, they, they um, planned this hoax, like it was all fake, da -da -da -da. but it turned out it was all real, so. And like, why would you even plan that you get no benefits from it right, yeah, if right. anything you're only getting backlash mm -hmm. so i don't get why you would plan your own kidnapping come back and just be just be normal again there's no point to that so i don't believe why the police department thought it was a hoax yes the movie came out like a year before but it's it's hollywood compared to real life there's no comparison at all like people some I some people 
like to do things like this for attention or just for revenge, but it's really no point. But like, imagine like explaining to the police what happened, and then like no one believes you. Yeah, like that's actually that's horrible. horrible. Yeah, that's a that's a horrible like um, position to be to in, be especially in. Yeah. like if media gets involved too. Cause you know, a kidnapping like in Vallejo, like who who kidnaps nowadays? Like who holds it's, people for ransom? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it's not something that you hear about every day. You know what I'm saying? And so. I think they just thought that, like, oh, this is all fake. They're not going to take it as seriously, but, you know, it was honestly a lot bigger than that. Right. And, like, even when she was found, like, Denise told her side of the story to Vallejo investigators, to Detective Lester. But and you don't, he, he didn't just, believe like, her. Like, he just looked at, like, even, like, her lawyer was saying, like, oh, they were looking at her like she was just, like, trash. Like, right. How could you let somebody do that to you? But it's just like they were sedated, dude. Drinking yeah, and they, they were given goggles. like they were given orders. Yeah. Like they don't know if they're gonna about to be right. like killed, you know, or right. murdered. Exactly. And I feel like in that situation, every anyone would be like following their orders because you don't know what's gonna happen. Yeah, right. Exactly. But I feel like the Vallejo Police Department right now, it's kind of seen as I feel like low ever since the. Mm-hmm. Documentary came out, even like in my criminal justice class that we're taking, people are, they're like, oh, apply to Vallejo, apply to Vallejo. They're even giving out these big bonuses for you to just apply. Mm-hmm. And I feel like part of that played because of the documentary that happened to me. Right. It's not a good look at all, you know. And keep in mind that they were sedated, they were under nitrile, and these, this was constant. It wasn't like a one time thing. So obviously, what you're going to say to the investigators isn't going to be the full picture you're also under a lot of stress too so whatever is going on you can't really explain it a lot of emotion and trauma yeah it's yeah. a lot of trauma and stuff too um the fact that she when she was released the kidnappers told her that you cannot say two things about us one is that we were in the military and the other one was that we you, uh, you got sexually abused so because they sexually abused her while she was in their like possession I guess you know yeah. what I and so they weren't she wasn't allowed to say that but you know I'm glad she did say but even then they didn't take her seriously because she did the uh, sexual abuse exam yeah. and it showed that she you know, was you abused. know abused, mm-hmm. and the police still didn't like take that. Like they still weren't believing her. That's crazy. You know, they yeah, didn't take her seriously horrible. at all. And I feel like it's sad nowadays because I feel like it's not brought into life because people. I feel so many people are affected by it, but because people don't like police, sometimes don't even want to believe it, even if the crazy and the story is that crazy. Mm-hmm. It it's gonna cause it to happen even more because it's not being right. brought into light and they're going to be afraid to come out and talk about it. Right. So, yeah, she she got an attorney after she was released and her attorney just basically told her that you cannot have these kidnappers have authority over you. Yeah. So, just say what you want to say and let it be true. Even if no one believes you, you have to say it. Um, so, she did eventually say that, yes, I was sexually abused. And um, they were military veterans that had PTSD. So, but even after all of this, like everyone thought that, like, oh, it was a hoax, case closed. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So she like lived months without justice. You know what I'm saying? Like, of what happened to her? And I think that's unfortunate. And these two things weren't really talked about before because the kidnapper said we were gonna kill your family and stuff like that i mean obviously i would be scared too if someone said that so yeah. but just keeping the authority over them that's a big part so just be sure to just be yourself and just tell everything just tell your side of the story yeah. and i felt like like even the kidnapper too he like um he was emailing uh 
San Francisco uh, Chronicles. The Chronicles. He was emailing them saying like, "Oh, the kidnapping was real." Da 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 da. Like, I'm gonna do more, right? Mm -hmm. And then he actually did do more. So was other faces. He didn't want to be caught, but then. I think he wanted he wanted the credit. That's what it is. Like he didn't oh. want like this big this big kidnapping case to be all turned out to be a hoax. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like why else would he say that? Like this guy is super weird. Like yeah, he how is how are you gonna kidnap someone and then when they don't believe the people that got kidnapped, they're gonna be like, Oh, let me email the chronicles and then be like yeah, I did kidnap this person. It's real. Believe that person. Like, who does that? Right. That's super weird. And he was telling um, the Vallejo community to apologize to uh, Denise and Aaron. Oh, yeah, like, he was. Um, okay, like, that's real he probably, weird. Like, Dude. like, he did show, like, or what are you talking about later? In segment three. Yeah. Okay. Um, so just going on, um... Yeah, so that's basically the end of this segment and we'll be on our commercial break. Thank you. The exponential growth from the program from my first year to my third year now, that's what keeps me coming back and keeps me excited and just like fulfills me as a person. It's so impressive and we, we, every time we walk in here you guys are doing something different. It's, it's great. It's nothing but opportunities here and we have sports to cover, we have the equipment. Because the more ambitious you are, the more opportunities you'll have. On-the-job training is, is huge. You get the hands-on experience. When someone asks who can do it, you know, you can raise your hand and say, I can do it, so. Joining a class is the best decision I ever made. Sam Byron, going to go to cut one. And cut one. Cross court to Audrey Jones. Audrey for three. And it's good! With 1.3 seconds left on the game clock, Audrey Jones with one of the biggest shots ever. The sky's the limit, really, with what we can do here. College just got affordable. Up to 100% of enrollment fees can be reimbursed for first-time college students taking full-time classes. At Solano Community College, we are taking full advantage of this to further your future. With certificate and degree programs in industrial technology, aeronautics, biotechnology, and many others, Solano Community College is a staple for success. For more information, please contact the Financial Aid Office at 707-864-7000. Welcome guys to segment three, the final segment of this absurd case. So, in this third episode of this series, the perpetrator he gets caught. Right. And it's really weird because um, this is another case where he broke into someone's house and um, same thing, zip ties, black goggles, and he's like, oh, just to let you know, I'm gonna sexual assault you and the lady she's like whoa what the heck like i i've been a victim before i don't she want this him. yeah, yeah she, him. she was begging him not to assault him or assault her because she's already been a victim doesn't want to go through it again so what happened was the perpetrator he basically was like oh, i can't do this i really can't do this i feel bad he even gives her like advice not yeah. like, on how not to get kidnapped again. Right? Which yeah. is crazy because most kidnappers don't show like empathy. empathy. Yeah. You know? But he I guess does show I mean, I don't wanna make him sound like a like he That's is sick. a good person, That's... but he does show like empathy, like but like those thoughts of kidnapping were obviously still there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So this case happened uh a okay. long time after the the original case mm -hmm. and this was in dublin mm -hmm. dublin california which is not that far from vallejo but it's pretty close so the this this police department the dublin police department they actually were much better than the vallejo police department um they found him. yeah they found him uh they connected the dots right. turns out that this person he was already in the file of the police department. He had countless uh, like sexual yeah. abuse charges, you know, like 
like breaking in charges like he had like a record already yeah and they they found him to like be a former military um officer and as well as um a harvard law student he used to be a lawyer yeah. but he knew what he was doing yeah and then the police department also found like evidence of other crimes because they in his car they found the goggles with a long with blonde piece of hair, hair in it with her hair yeah. in it so um officer missy yeah. she um she was like there's other victims yeah. you know what i'm saying we have to find who whoever's hair this is if they're dead or alive you know what i'm saying mm -hmm. so because the person that was in the other uh case she wasn't blonde she was a brunette her yeah. hair was she had like long brown yeah hair. So off, Officer Misty, she's like, wait, this isn't the person that was originally kidnapped. So this person, this kidnapper, he must have had other people in the car. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Officer Misty was the great, like the hero of the story because she was the bridge that connected these two cases. Yeah, she was. Um, and the crazy part is too, like, she got a call saying, like, t um, about the case, like, in a... Vallejo, he was already known as like the Mare Island stalker yeah. or creeper. But then, and then he was like saying like, oh, did you hear about the Gone Girl case? Comparing, uh, it was, they were talking about Denise and Aaron's case. And then she did research on that and found that she had long blonde hair. And after she made that discovery, she tried to contact Vallejo Police Department constantly, but they wouldn't answer. Mm -hmm. And they're like, and she, Officer Missy, she's like, we have your guy in our custody right now. This might be the guy that um, was kidnapping uh, Denise because the everything matches up. The goggles, the swimsuits, the car. But, like, they found the car too. Yeah, but you know what they said? They were just like, oh, this is under the FBI now. Yeah. So you have to take it up with the FBI. And then... Like, she was just kind of like, dang, like, that's it? Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they're showing no remorse towards this and case. Have, and Dublin has all the evidence, kind of. Right. Way. But it's just so crazy how all of these locations, like, even, like, the other cases, weren't they, like, in, like, um, Palo Alto? Mm -hmm. Like, those are all, like, close, like, areas to here. Right. So it's just, like, that makes it even crazier. And leading back to what Charisma said a while ago, um, the phone call that Aaron Quinn had, he had a phone. They were, the kidnappers, they were trying to reach him, be like, hey, we need our ransom money. But actually, when he was in interrogation, all the officers, they shut the phone down. They put it in airplane mode. So no one could call him or text him. But turns out when the phone was turned off, uh, turned on again in uh, like a couple, like 12 hours, he had two missed calls. And turns out that those calls, they could have been really like traced, like really easily to where the perpetrator was right. in Lake Tahoe. Yeah. So all this could have been prevented if the officers just took better precautions. And now there's like already like damage onto the victims yeah. as well because they... They went through like people saying like, oh, these are false allegations, you know what I'm saying? Like, imagine going through like a kidnapping, your girlfriend got kidnapped or like you were in that situation, you got kidnapped and sexually assaulted mm -hmm. just for you to get backlash from everybody. You know what I'm saying? It's one thing if like, you know, the media doesn't believe you, okay, whatever, that's fine, right. but it's the police don't believe you? Yeah. Like, what are you supposed like, to do? Like, how do you live with that? people that protect us. Right. Denise didn't even get things. justice exactly. until like years after. So yeah. I think that's like actually like so horrible for her. Yeah. For everyone involved. I agree. Yeah. yeah, the police not believing you, the law enforcement not believing you. It's definitely is, like an issue. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. yeah. Because they're what we look up to. They're our protectors. Like if something goes wrong, who do we call? The police. Right. Well, if some if they don't believe us, then what's the point? Yeah, exactly. And like, like after they got caught, like they sued Vallejo Police Department for like de de defamation, 
Is that what it's saying? Yeah. Defamation? Yeah. And period, as they should. They, I would have too. I would have too. Yeah. Right. They paid the couple $2.5 million, which, yeah. good. That's a lot. Good. Honestly, yeah. I think it was a little low. I feel like they could have gotten a little <laughs> bit For all the Trump, low. like, dude. Like, $5 million, but. maybe. <laughs> but turns out the victim, his or no, the kidnapper, his name was Matthew Muller. Uh -huh. Um, he was Matthew. only sentenced to forty years in prison. I feel like if you have all those cases on your record, all those right. uh, sexual assault charges, I feel like forty years is kind of low, right? And some of the cases he didn't even get charged for. Yeah, them. they were just like rumors, I guess. Yeah. Like if if I was the lawyer or the judge, I would I would put this guy in prison for life, like rot in jail, rude. Like how did he get away with that? Like he 40 got away years? with so much, I don't know. just to get forty years. Right. Like that's so like small. Um, but it turns out at the very end of the show or the series, um, Denise and Aaron they did up have they ended up having two kids. And they moved on the coast, far away from where that right. horrible stuff happened. Yeah. Um, yeah. I guess like six years later, too, they get an actual like public apology. But yeah. six mm -hmm. years later. Yeah. But yeah. It's good that they did make a documentary about this to spread light. You know, like yeah. give them back like their credibility, pretty much. You know. It's just saying that if no one believes you, still fight for what you got. Um, never give up. That's basically what this series is trying to say. That if no one believes you, at least believe yourself and maybe someone out there will believe you at the end. Right. right. And it should open up more light about how these departments are you know, treating their own civilians, their own community. Right. It should open up light that we should have them, not more in training, but how do I say it? Like, Less laziness. Yeah. Like, I just felt like they were just so lazy mm -hmm. and like like they just wanted to pin it on something else rather than find the actual the truth. actual right, exactly. Because this police department in Dublin, they solved the case really quick. Right. Yeah. I feel like if you're really dedicated to something then you'll solve that case quick because Officer Missy, she's she's the GOAT. Like she <laughs> she solved everything. And it was a woman? Yeah, yeah, it was, was a woman. A woman, woman power, girl boss. She, she, she said like she came into this department like because of sexual abuse yeah. charges. Like, her children, they yeah, were victims. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So shout out to Miss, Mrs. Uh, Missy. Officer, Officer Missy. Missy. Yeah. My bad. Um. Yeah. So, ending off, we have charisma carry on myself, Austin Sidhu, Eva Verador, Paris Fulton. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a great day. Hi, I'm Ruth Fuller, and I'm a librarian here at Solano Community College, and I want to welcome you to our new Library and Learning Resources Building. This library has been built for you. We have many areas for you to study in, from quiet, silent areas to reservable, group study rooms, as well as large tables for you to study and work together. We have a textbook reserve collection that holds the textbooks for most, if not all, of your classes. We have computers for you to use. We have laptops that you can check out and take home. We have calculators for you to use with your math courses. We have bones that you can use with your science courses. You can get further information at www.solano.edu slash library. This is our virtual library where all of our virtual library services are available, including chat service with our college librarians. Also on this page, you have access to our article databases for scholarly research, as well as our popular magazine service where you can actually flip through magazines like Sports Illustrated or Time Magazine. We have our ebook collections, we have our film databases, and many, many other resources for you to use for your school needs as well as for fun. Our librarians and staff are here to help you with all of your research needs.